How how did you train for a thirty minute round? Did you go? Did you do longer or, or just a long like nonstop? I always I always prepare myself for short hard workouts. So my workouts will be like an hour. Mm-hmm. That's it. Two times a day, an hour. Right. People train six hours a day. I never understood that. Yeah. You know, my technique was there. So I'm just to go. No, if I have to drill something, I will do that. But normally, I, I if I train my body twice a day to throw out a lot of energy in like a, in, in 45 minutes, like full on. Well, then you get used to it slowly but surely, and now you can throw out a lot of power in half an hour. Yeah. Still to this day, what I do, huh. my weight training is 30 minutes, but it's insane. Not a lot of people can come up with me because it's yeah. only supersets, just zero rest. Bam, 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 bam. Next, dum, 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 dum. 30 minutes amount, yeah. you know. And, and my workout probably 40. That's 10 rounds of three minutes. That's punching, kicking. That and that's it. I yeah. do power training, power training, conditioning, power training, power training, conditioning. It's called re, re, trying to uh-huh. reconnect the muscles here yeah. because they're still atrophied from the neck surges and the nerve stopped sending signals. But this was the whole arm, so it starts coming down very slowly. But then people go, "Yeah, this is nine years ago, guys." <laughs> so uh-huh. I started with three pounds, and I can do now like twenty. Yeah, you know, over nine years. So, and I think it's a lot of supporting muscles actually picking it up. So from when you were the, the UFC heavyweight champion to today, as far as obviously it be more mainstream and much more money f- to be made uh, for the fighters, but what would you say have changed as far as training regimen? More hybrid fighters, but as far as... Because you have your own gym, Elite MMA up in Calabasas, and as far as the training in itself, what do you see fighters do better today versus when you were training and perhaps worse today than they were back then? Well, um, well, everything's better, I believe, you know, and I think more fighters start doing what I was doing early on. I understand real, st- understood really fast that grappling is power training. I started growing from grappling. That's when I stopped putting on weight. Didn't wait, but from the grappling. And then once I realized, I go, oh, okay, this is the trick. Because once you start grappling, you know, and, and, uh, and take down the fence and take down the fence, you're working your core muscles and your core muscles start pumping up with lactic acid like any other muscle in the body does when you're trained with resistance. Mm-hmm. And, of course, the core doesn't only go to the front. They go to the back as well. Your chest gets tight. Well, guess what? You need your chest you use to inhale. And a lot of people, they go like, ah, oh, that's because your lungs do that. No, your lungs don't do anything. If you blow out, completely out, you close your nose and try to expand your chest, you can't. You're not able to do it, you know, because it's literally. So people think your chest expands because you fill it with air, but it's the opposite way. It, it expands because your, your chest expands and that opens up your lungs. There's a vacuum between the body and the lungs. I always try to explain it and I found a way I think it's like imagine a balloon. I have a big balloon and that's, those are your lungs, right? For the sake of the argument, I put glue on my hands and I put the, grab the balloon and I pull it open. Mm. That's literally what your chest is doing. Only there's no glue. There's a vacuum between the body, but your chest expansion will pull in that air. So once I realize, wait a minute, I got to start training my core more. Because do, do, do 50 sit-ups and go on the back. See how that feels. Mm. You're gonna, your conditioning is down. And that's why you saw these guys in the beginning, and especially the steroid guys, because your muscles pump like crazy. They're strong, and boom, they drop. Most of the time when you saw that in the fight, those guys were using steroids. <clears throat> so you need to have it calm and release. So I used to do a lot of sit-ups, and everybody said, what are you doing before the fight? But sit-ups, mm. stretching, sit-ups, stretching. Get mm. the lactic acid out of your core, and once it's out, you're so much easier to breathe, and that's why it gave me the stamina. So I always did power training and stamina exercises. I do two power training exercises and a stamina exercise, and I take 12 exercises in total. So four are uh, conditioning, and the rest is all. So you go uh, biceps, triceps, and then uh, kicking your back. And everything I do, 50 seconds, but everything as hard as I can. And what I do still till this day as well is 30 rounds of one minute on the back. And people go like, you do 31 minute rounds, that's easy. I say, oh, well, you do it like me, it's not gonna be easy yeah. because I do everything to kill. Yeah. You know, every single punch is as hard as I can. But if you start t- 10 weeks out, then I'll, I'll go one minute rounds. And once I can complete all the 10 rounds full power, I go to one minute, five seconds, and I'll take 55 seconds rest. So five seconds increase, five seconds decrease from resting time. And then every week I go five seconds more. And suddenly you're at one and a half minute throwing out a crazy amount of energy for, and you do this 30 minutes with only 30 seconds rest. Now people go, what, what's that going to do? <clears throat> Look at any boxing fight or any, any other fight where somebody unloads on the opponent for 20 seconds and they can't put him away, now they're out of gas. Mm-hmm. Well, I can do this for one and a half minutes, full blast, and I can do this 15 times in a, co- in a row. You see, so that's I always, I always go for the worst experience. I always thought that if you, 
if you lose a fight because you weren't in shape enough, you're the dumbest person on the planet. It's like being a painter and coming with a half a can of paint. It makes no sense. It's your freaking job. It would upset me so much when people would run out of gas. Yeah. I go, dude, it's very easy. Go hill sprints. Very easy. Yeah. <laughs> you know, yeah. 45 seconds off, 30 seconds off, do that. I have another crazy running exercise on the yeah. drill I used to do. Dude, I will kill you. I'm you know, with you. up by your house. Oh, it's the hardest thing yeah. there is. Yeah, yeah. And this is, so, <coughs> you know, you hear people saying, uh, we're doing this, we're doing that. I, I, we, I was training with you. This is 2004, 2005, and you were doing these things. You were still active. Oh yeah. And that's you, you, you're right. Like you, you're saying, you've been doing this for for a long time. Um, it's interesting what you say about the breathing, and 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 you have your um, O2 trainer. Yeah, the O2 trainer here that is yours that you developed, and I'm gonna let you talk about it in a second. But I just have to ask: Is it a Dutch thing when it comes to breathing? Because I'm sure you familiar with Eisman Hoff. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, who I think is an absolutely amazing, extraordinary human being um, and who I'd love to have on the show one day, by the way. <laughs> yeah. And and also from Holland, also focuses on the breathing. He's done things that scientists said it's not possible. Yeah. And, and, and you've been doing this for a long time. Where did you get your research from? Where did you get this information? Uh, I was an asthma patient. I was a severe asthma patient. So I play with a dog, for instance, any f hair animal, fur animal, if I pay 30 minutes with it, I will be the next eight days in bed, asthma attack. And an asthma attack, not able to eat, not able to drink sometimes, be <laughs> like this 24 seven a day. But what I always would real also realize is after an attack, I would resume my track and field, I would always break my running times, and then go and I go, what's going on? And then I went to pay a visit at the doctor's office because every month I had to go there and then somebody from the office, they teach you how to breathe, all the asthma patients, because a lot of people raise their shoulders, right? You have to breathe through your core mm. to get the most air into your lungs. And uh, I saw a, 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 a drawing of a pair of lungs in the frame on the wall. And that's when I, I saw, they show what asthma was. And the asthma is not, in the lungs, what you think. No, it's only in the airways go to the lungs, the bronchial tubes. Those are infected. And it was a, an infected one, and it showed next to it a healthy one. And that was it. I was 14. That's when I came up with that idea. I go, oh, I've been working out my lungs at the time. At the time, I still thought my lungs were doing the work, not, the, not your right. chest. I've been working my lungs out for eight days straight, 24-7. You know, breathing in with resistance to an area. Right. So now when the infection gone, it's much easier to breathe. Why don't I come up with something? And I start, you know, if you, that, on my keys, I have a washer. The washer is still on there because like a, a, with bolts and nuts and a washer, you know, the little yeah. circle with a hole in it. We start putting it in front of my teeth and trying to breathe through it. Super dangerous, of course, because if you open too much, you shoot <laughs> you alone, you're dead. You know, all that. But I start experimenting with it. And then a long time later, actually, Vendelay Silva, first of all, on every party that I go to, you talk about inventions. There's always a person who says, oh, I got a great idea for an snorkel. invention. And, and the snorkel device with uh, what Vanderlei Silva yeah, did that on the that. Ultimate Fighter. I remember that, yeah. And then my phone went nuts. And they say, hey, the routinizer, because it was original name, the routinizer, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. you should yeah. make that thing because, I mean, look at the show. And I don't know what they're doing. They're trying to rebreathe carbon dioxide and that triggers red blood cell count. Huh. But, you know, you can't do that in half an hour. You're going to have to do that eight hours a day in order to really get the desired effect. But I go, okay, when I got four text messages, two phone calls, I go, maybe I should make it. And that's when I started making it. Three weeks with the prototype, my asthma co completely gone. Imagine this. I go travel every single where on the planet with an inhaler. Because if I sneeze violently, I need to open them up. Oh. A lot of asthma patients have that. If you take a sprint for 20 seconds, you stop. Two minutes later, lungs close. You have to open them up. Before every fight in the dressing room, my lungs would close. Open them up and then you can go. Now the freedom of I haven't had an inhaler for nine years, zero. You know, it just, and then I sent one to my buddy in Holland who has asthma. Eight days later, he calls me. I want to sell him in Europe. He's selling me in Europe right now because his asthma is gone. So medically, I can't claim it because we didn't have the test done because they're very expensive, like eighty, hundred thousand dollars $100,000. But if you read all the reviews, it's either 90% using or completely healed.